So, okay, so let me start. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for the uh, invitation. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about uh, the uh, uh, bubbling of uh, what we call Q curvature equations of four manifolds in the new case. So this is a joint work with the uh, Hong Zhang from uh, South China Normal University in China. Okay. Um, let me go straight to uh, the motivation of uh, uh, my work. So I assume that uh, M is a compact Riemannian form manifold uh, with a boundary. And uh, suppose that uh, F is uh, a non-trivial smooth function on M. So I will, con I will talk about uh, uh, the equation 1F, which is uh, the prescribing Q curvature equation. So in this equation uh, on the left-hand side, we have uh, a differential operator called the Panet operator. This is a force order operator. And on the right-hand side, we have uh, function F uh, times uh, exponential for you. And uh, the reason why we we want to study equation 1f, because uh, if you have a solution used to that equation, then uh, you give, uh, you have a conformal metric whose Q curvature is f. So I will talk about the, what is the Q curvature, uh, but uh, let's start with uh, 1f. So, so in, in, in this case, we have two uh, simple but uh, remarkable results. The first one is the uh, non-existent result, which says that uh, if F is non-positive, then uh, the equation has no solution. But if we increase the function F a little bit, so we say F less than or equal to so small number epsilon, which is uh, small, then uh, we have some solution. So um, uh, we conduct this uh, research uh, project because uh, we realize that if uh, we let epsilon goes to zero, then solution to uh, the equation one f with f less than epsilon will uh, escape to infinity because uh, when epsilon equals zero, we have no solution. So uh, we put uh, that observation uh, as follow. We fix some function f0, uh, which is uh, non-positive and has some uh, uh, maximum at, uh, at zero. And then we perturb uh, f0 by some small lambda. So we, we denote f0 plus lambda equals f lambda. And then well, we decrease lambda goes to zero and we want to understand uh, the uh, behavior of solution u lambda to the equation one f with f replaced by f lambda. Oops, sorry. Okay, so um, the outline of the talk is as follow. So first of all, I uh, talk about the Panet operator, its Q curvature, and then the, the PD. Then I will talk about two equations. One is uh, the Q curvature equation. The other is the Q curvature flow equation. And then uh, I will talk about some perturbation of the Q curvature equation. So the, the perturbation uh, is, it comes from the fact that I want to unify both equation and the flow equations. And I want to study these equations uh, at the same time. And then for the last session, I will talk about the main results. So the main result is uh, to show that uh, there is some uh, bubbling solution to the perturbed equation. And then uh, I give some remarks. Oops. Okay. So uh, to start with uh, the Panet operators, uh, let me remind you the uh, second order case first. So uh, we know that the Laplace Beltram is greater is, uh, is given by uh, delta zero equals some uh, summation 
And then uh, if we uh, make you a conformal train, uh, GU, which is uh, two E to U, G0, then uh, the, the Laplace operator enjoy the uh, conformal uh, train uh, I show here. Okay. Uh, furthermore, we also have what we call a uh, Gaussian curvature equation, which relate uh, the uh, Gaussian curvature of uh, the metric G0 and the metric GU. So uh, for higher order case, uh, we have uh, what we call the planet operator uh, denoted by capital P. So this, this operator uh, discovered in 1983 uh, by planet uh, on, uh, on four manifolds. So it's given by uh, this uh, formula and the leading term of uh, the planet operator is uh, Laplace square. So this is by Laplace, and we have a lower order term here. So in a, in the case of R four, the the planet operator is exactly the by Laplace, and on S four, the four sphere, uh, it is a product of between uh, Laplace and uh, Laplace minus two. Okay. So. Uh, the, the previous two uh, differential operator, Laplace, uh, Laplacian and uh, planet operator, uh, actually be, belongs to uh, a wider class of operator. Uh, we call this is uh, conformally covariant operators of by degree uh, AB. So, uh, so these operator enjoy this conformal trade rule. So uh, if you want to uh, compute with uh, respect to the conformal matrix GU, then uh, it is just uh, exponential minus BU times uh, the, the operator with respect to the background matrix of some, uh, some multiplication of, uh, of phi here. Okay. So in the case of a Laplace operator, uh, it is uh, of by degree uh, zero two, okay. And then in the case of a uh, planet operator, it is of uh, by degree zero four. Okay. So uh, for convenience, uh, I also put a, a table showing that uh, in fact, uh, for other dimensions, three, four, five, and so on, uh, we can modify the operator, uh, the, the Laplacian and the planet operator to have a, a set of uh, conformal, uh, conformally, uh, conformal uh, transformation uh, operators. So in, in the case of uh, two manifolds, we have a Laplacian. And then for higher dimension, uh, we have a uh, conformal Laplacian. So uh, it is different from uh, uh, Laplacian by uh, another factor involving the scale curvature. So you see that uh, it, for, for the two dimension, uh, this term drops because we have uh, uh, N minus two here. And for, for the case of a planet operator, uh, for dimension three and uh, five and above, uh, we have what uh, we usually call the planet uh, Branson operator. So it is uh, almost the same as a planet operator, but uh, it, it plus some uh, cube curvature there. So, so in the case of the four dimension, uh, uh, that curvature disappear because uh, we have a, a coefficient n minus four. Oops, sorry, um, I have trouble with the, the keyboard. <laughs> okay, so uh, so now I want to talk about the Q curvature. So this is due to Branson and uh, his co-author. So like the Gaussian curvatures on the two manifolds, uh, we have uh, the Heider or the analog for four manifolds called the Q curvature. So the Q curvature is given uh, by this formula. Uh, here's the scalar curvature here, and then here is this is curvature. So if we, we train the metric G0 by multiply by is 2U, same, uh, then we have uh, a conformal transformation rule or QGU. So this is almost the same as the transformation of the Gaussian curvature under this uh, conformal train. Okay, so, so now I want to talk about the uh, 
prescribing Q curvature problem. So uh, the, pro the, the problem is stated as follow. So uh, given a smooth function F on M, is there a metric in the conformal class of the background matrix G0 uh, such that uh, the Q curvature, Q curvature is exactly F? So uh, in fact, uh, there's some, there is one uh, restriction here. Uh, a metric must be in the conformal class of the G0. So uh, without looking for a metric in this uh, conformal, uh, conformal class of G0, uh, so uh, the problem is uh, underdetermined because um, we only one equation, which is a Q curvature equals F, but we have uh, N times M minus one over two variables. So uh, this is an undetermined problem. So uh, going back to the uh, conformal chain of the Q curvature, uh, we arrive at what uh, I just call the Q curvature equation. So uh, this equation is nothing but the uh, PU plus a Q equals F times uh, E for U. So uh, geometrically, uh, if you can solve this equation uh, to have some solution U, then you can construct a conformal matrix with the by Q curvature F. Okay, so um, so why should we uh, why, why should we interest in uh, the conformal chain? So uh, uh, there's one reason why we are interested in uh, the, the conformal chain of the matrix because uh, on, on one hand uh, is uh, it equalizes the number of equation and uh, the number of variable so that uh, the problem is now uh, determined. The other is uh, uh, is uh, we. We, 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 we can uh, start with any metric in the conformal class. So uh, I, I, I put here a diagram. Uh, okay, so uh, for this uh, direction, this is the conformal class of a G0. So here's uh, the G0 itself. And this is another metric in the conformal class. So I denoted by E to V0. So if you start with uh, G0, then you, you have a Q curvature Q G0 and you have a, the Q curvature equation uh, computed with respect to this uh, metric. And if you can solve for U, and then you can uh, construct a, a metric, and then you have uh, the Q curvature of metric is F. Okay, but if you start with uh, the other metric, E2 V0, then uh, you have a corresponding Q curvature equation. And if you start, uh, you can solve this equation for the W, and then you, again, you can uh, construct a conformal metric and you have the Q curvature, which is an F. And uh, the, res the, the relation between uh, the solution of these two Q curvature equations is that uh, uh, you have a W equals U minus V or, or U equals W plus V. So, uh, so this diagram shows that, uh, uh, well, uh, you, you can start at any metric in this conformal class. So uh, usually people start with uh, uh, some metric such that uh, the Q curvature is constant. So, so you turn this equation into uh, a simpler one. Like, uh, so this, this is scalar is now constant, it's not a function anymore. So this leads to uh, uh, the prescribing constant Q curvature problem. So this is this study by Alice Chan and Ponya and 2000, sorry, 1992 and others. Okay, so, uh, well, uh, we talk about the planet operator and uh, cube curvature, just a high order analog of uh, the Laplacian uh, and um, the Gaussian curvature. So why, why we should study these uh, curvatures? So, um, well, uh, uh, in fact, I do not know. <laughs> I try to Google this and then uh, uh, there not much information about uh, why we study Q curvature equation, except that uh, the Q curvature uh, uh, enjoy uh, the Jones gauss bonnet formula. So, uh, so on the left-hand side, you have a, the, the, the total integral of uh, Q curvature uh, plus uh, one quarter of the, uh, to the, the integral of the y tensor square. And on the right hand side, you have a uh, eight pi squared times uh, Euler characteristic. So, uh, 
So perhaps uh, we can say that the Q curvature enjoy this uh, formula. So uh, there's some topological information here. And uh, uh, one key uh, information uh, coming from this uh, formula is that uh, the total integral of the Q curvature is a, a to topological invariance. This is because uh, the integral of the y tensor square here is also a topological invariance. So, so um, well, when you, you, you to start with, uh, you consider a matrix on an M and you can use uh, the, the size of the value of this uh, number. So, so for this region, um, uh, when, start, when starting the Q curvature equation, uh, we usually split the problem into three cases. Uh, the first one is corresponding to uh, the positive uh, invariant. The second is uh, uh, the zero uh, invariant, and then the third one is the negative one. So, so it in my talk I'm in, introduced in uh, the second case. Uh, so I call this the known case. That means that the total integral of the uh, Q curvature is zero. And in fact, because of the, the results of Alice Chan and Paul Yang, uh, we can uh, choose the background matrix zero, zero such that the Q curvature is zero. So, so we don't have uh, the scalar Q zero in the Q curvature equation anymore. Okay, so so uh, back to the three cases here. So we have some obvious uh, necessary condition when we st uh, study the uh, Q curve equation. So I put here the necessary condition. So for the non case, uh, the function f is size changing. Okay. Okay. So so in order to to study uh, the Q curve equation. Uh, we need to uh, um, have some uh, some looks and uh, some. We need to realize some difference between uh, uh, the lower case and the higher order case. So uh, I list here some major differences between the two operators. So first of all, uh, the Panetz operator is uh, of order four, and uh, the, the the Laplacian is only two. Okay. Uh, the second is uh, the Panet operator is not necessarily uh, positive. So, uh, so here's some uh, some uh, results on the positivity of the Panet operators. Um, okay, so um, the third uh, difference is uh, the Panet operators uh, need not satisfy the maximum principle. So this is a typical. Uh, uh, feature of high order uh, operators. So usually we, we should not expect uh, the maximum principle to hold. <laughs> uh, okay. But uh, uh, remarkably, uh, for some very small uh, assumption on the, uh, uh, the metrics, uh, so the Gursky and Marchiolis and uh, uh, Hang and Po Yang, uh, can prove the maximum principle for dimension three and uh, dimension five and above. Okay. And then the last uh, difference uh, between the two operators is uh, the kernel of the uh, Panet operator is not uh, necessarily uh, trivial. So uh, you, you know that uh, the kernel of uh, Laplacian is, uh, is what, but the kernel is, uh, of the Panet operator is uh, not necessarily trivial. Okay. Okay. So now um, I so um, for the moment I will talk about uh, two types of equation. So the first one is the, the Q curvature equation, and then uh, this, the second one will be uh, the Q curvature flow equation. So uh, let me start with the Q curvature equation in the no case. So um, there is a very nice result. So the very nice existing result. So uh, assuming that um, the Panetz operator is a positive uh, with a kernel considering of uh, constant functions, then uh, under uh, uh, these two uh, condition, uh, the first one is the, 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 the function f is positive somewhere and the total uh, 
integral of f is negative, then uh, we have one solution. Uh, we have at least one solution used to the equation. Okay. And uh, uh, the, the proof is quite as uh, straightforward. You just uh, uh, construct uh, uh, one uh, energy is functional, and then you you look you look at uh, the minimizer of uh, that energy, and they use uh, Lagrange uh, to, to to prove that uh, their solution to um, to the equation. Okay. So um, so uh, okay. So uh, let let me. Let me comment on the, the, the results of the girl and then two. Uh, the, the, the assumption on the, the positive of maximum F is uh, necessary, as uh, I said uh, before. But here uh, we need uh, extra condition on the, uh, the integral of F. Okay. And um, uh, compared to the case of uh, the, the prescribing uh, Gaussian curvature equation in the non case uh, the, the the condition on the side of integral of f is necessary but uh, in the case of q curvature equation uh, this extra condition is not necessary so but uh, we cannot we don't know how to remove this as far as i know okay <clears throat> so um to support these uh, comments, uh, um, there's a paper uh, by uh, uh, Beth uh, and uh, others in uh, 2006. Um, they construct uh, a metric uh, on uh, uh, on the, the four torus, and then uh, they compute the uh, the Q curvature, and then they, they prove that in that case. Uh, the integral of a Q curvature is positive. So uh, limiting to the, the negative total integral is, uh, is uh, not necessary. Okay. So, but uh, if we uh, with, uh, throw away that condition, then uh, in fact, we can prove uh, uh, the existence of solution up to a sign. So, uh, so we have a plus or minus here. And then we cannot determine uh, which one is the correct one. Okay. Okay. So um, now I, I go to the uh, Q curvature flow. So uh, instead of using the uh, direct method to look for a solution, uh, I, I, I use uh, the heat uh, flow. So uh, I fix a metric as usual, and then I try to. Uh, I try to um, uh, formulate uh, an evolution of uh, the time dependent metric uh, G lambda T, which is uh, conformal to uh, the background metric D0 uh, by the uh, E to U lambda. And then uh, at the initial time, uh, we can uh, put any uh, initial uh, conformal factor U lambda zero, and then for Time, uh, the positive time, uh, the evolution is uh, is in this uh, screen. So the time derivative of the, the metric uh, is uh, equal to a minus twice of the, the Q curvature minus uh, some alpha f and the lambda. So uh, if you uh, if you replace g lambda by uh, e to u lambda g zero. Then you can transfer transfer from for this uh, equation for the metric to the equation for the conformal factor. So uh, we will get uh, the time derivative of u lambda equals alpha lambda f lambda minus the Q curvature of the uh, time dependent metric. <clears throat> okay. So um, uh, the way we construct uh, this evolution. Uh, is to ensure that uh, this is a negative gradient flow. Okay, so using uh, the previous uh, energies, uh, the time derivative is not positive. Okay, so um, uh, so far 
alpha lambda is just a, a constant, that's a time dependent constant. So, uh, so we, we need to uh, uh, specify what is the alpha lambda. So we, we choose the alpha lambda in such a way that uh, uh, the integral of f lambda is constant. So uh, if uh, we use this, uh, then uh, we can prove that uh, in fact, uh, along the flow, uh, the volume is also constant. So, so using, uh, using uh, this evolution, uh, uh, we have two constraints. One is uh, the, uh, the constant of uh, the, the integral of f lambda, and the other is the volume. Okay, so um, so uh, with uh, Zhang Hong, uh, we we can prove some uh, um, existing uh, solution to the flow one. Okay, so uh, before uh, I talk about that result, so let me uh, let me show why should we study that flow. Okay, so suppose uh, that uh, the flow converts converges, namely. Uh, uh, we have u lambda t goes to u lambda infinity in some sense, then uh, from the flow equation for u lambda, okay, so this equation, and we pass t to infinity, and then uh, we end up uh, at uh, alpha lambda infinity f lambda equals uh, q of uh, uh, g lambda f infinity. So that means uh, we have a, a metric g lambda infinity. Uh, which has a Q curvature uh, proportional to uh, F lambda. So we just scale uh, U lambda infinity a little bit, then we have uh, some conformal metric with the Q curvature F lambda, okay. <clears throat> so uh, now uh, let me uh, talk about the uh, these results of uh, convergence. So um, we, we proved that um, the flow has a solution U T Define all time, and then uh, there's a sequence of times, uh, uh, some constant alpha lambda infinity, and we have some conversion uh, up to that time sequence. Okay. So um, initially we expected to have a uniform convergence, but uh, we failed to prove this, and then uh, we tried to try uh, several ways, but uh, we cannot. Therefore, um, in principle, uh, we we should not expect to have uniform convergence, and perhaps this uh, this is the reason why we work on the Petrup equation that I'm going to talk later. Okay, so back to the uh, uh, the, the the flow equation. If we uh, if we use uh, the conformal chain of the Q curvature applied to the Q, Q curvature of the time dependence metric. Okay, here's I, I remind you the conformal train of the Q curvature and you uh, rewrite this equation and then you end up uh, P U lambda is equal to uh, alpha lambda, F lambda E for U lambda. And we have uh, an extra term minus the time derivative of U lambda E for U lambda. So therefore uh, compare the Q curvature equation and this uh, new form of a Q curvature flow equation, uh, they are more the same except that uh, there are some extra term here. Okay, so uh, putting uh, the Q curvature equation and uh, this flow equation uh, together, uh, we propose to study uh, a Petrup Q curvature equation. So that Petrup Q curvature equation will uh, help us to handle the Q curvature equation and this uh, flow equation at the same time. Okay, so here's a okay. So I, I try to uh, I try to uh, summarize what I'm trying to uh, to speak. Uh, okay, so on the left hand side we have the equation. So this is the Q curvature equation in all case, and on the right hand side we have a flow equation. So uh, they are almost the same. Okay, so. Uh, so uh, in view of these two equations, I try to uh, consider the, the, the rest equation here, PU equals FE for U plus uh, HE for U. And uh, for some reason, um, uh, we expect that uh, there's some blow up uh, a curve. Okay. <laughs> so uh, so to, 
um, to the inspiring of uh, a work of Struve in 2020 um, for the uh, Gaussian curvature flow in no case. So we propose to study the same uh, problem, but for the fourth, fourth order case. And uh, we try to uh, consider so some simple scale, like uh, we perturb the non-positive uh, function by a little bit, uh, uh, by a little cost and uh, uh, lambda, and we try to understand what happened if we lose uh, lambda to zero. Okay, so so uh, the configuration of the, the, the problem, as I said at the beginning of the talk, uh, we, we fix uh, some, some function F0, which is non-positive, we partook by small lambda, and uh, we consider class of a uh, solution u lambda uh, followed by using the uh, direct method. So just uh, say just uh, minimize the energy function over some constraint, and then uh, we have some solution uh, u lambda. So u lambda is solution to the equation two lambda uh, corresponding to the f lambda. Okay. So, uh, okay, so obviously uh, two zero has no solution, of course, right? Because now the function f zero is non-positive. And, uh, and if, uh, if uh, lambda is sufficiently small but positive, then uh, we have some minimal some, uh, solution, uh, uh, u lambda uh, followed by the Gershwin uh, results I talked about earlier. So, so if we let lambda goes to zero, so the solution u lambda will fly away from it. So uh, we are interested in the behavior of a u lambda. Okay, so um, eight, uh, we can prove that a the limit if of lambda alpha lambda is bounded from above by 64 pi square. And uh, also uh, as a consequence, uh, we have a limb in for the integral of positive part of Q curvature of uh, uh, G lambda we also bounded from above by 64 pi square, okay? So uh, the proof is quite uh, involved, so I, I don't fix it. Okay, so, so, um, uh, so for 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 our case, uh, we uh, we we consider the equation of three k, and uh, for some sequence lambda k to go to zero, uh, to be determined later, and uh, we want to understand the uh, uh, blow up behavior of the w k as k goes to infinity. Okay. <laughs> So uh, okay, just we go back to previous slide. So, so in, in view of the the first important fact, uh, there will be some sequence uh, lambda go to zero such that uh, lambda alpha lambda mm, is bounded from both by sixty four pi square. So uh, I can assume uh, that uh, this limb soup of lambda k alpha alpha lambda k is bounded from both by sixty four pi square. Okay. And uh, for the uh, term involving uh, the perturbation uh, HK, um, so uh, I, I make uh, another assumption because uh, uh, that HK we can uh, freely, uh, freely uh, piecewise. So uh, uh, my assumption is uh, the, the like L2 norm of HK is uh, little O1. Okay, so uh, with this uh, uh, behavior, this is a behavior of HK with K large. Uh, we can we can apply for the Q curvature equation. Uh, in this case, K is zero, and for the Q curvature flow equation. Okay, uh, and in 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 the case of flow equation, you can. We can take x to be the time derivative of, uh, of u. And then uh, from the analysis of flow equation, uh, we, we know that ut satisfy this condition. So we can, we can make you this uh, assumption. Okay. So, um, so uh, in, in, in our work, we need to perform uh, three uh, 
tough. So the first one is to realize the, the blow up. So we need to prove that well, the blow up must occur because the uh, solution you lambda goes to infinity and somewhere it must, must uh, blow up. And then a uh, second one is to characterize the behavior of uh, uh, WK away from any bubble, uh, any blow up points. And then the, 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 the last one is to characterize the behavior of the, the WK near the blow up point. Okay. <laughs> so in order to realize that the, the blow up must occur, uh, we need to uh, prove something. Like, uh, we need to realize that the blow, uh, must occur uh, is in fact equivalent to uh, showing that uh, there's some con concentration of the curvature. Okay, so uh, the con concentration of curvature is simply uh, you integrate uh, the, the positive uh, part of the, the, the Q curvature uh, some, uh, around some more, then uh, that one is bounded from uh, below by some constant. So in our case, the constant is eight pi square. So if you can prove this, then uh, we can talk. Uh, we have some concentration of curvature and, and okay, then that the bulk must occur. So, um, so proof is uh, quite involved. So the idea is uh, to turn our, uh, to prove some, uh, some, 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 some bounded of the, uh, uh, the volume, and then uh, we use the loss of uh, standard elliptic estimate, and then uh, we arise in, uh, with some contradiction, etc. So, so therefore, uh, the we have some uh, concentration of curvature. Okay, <coughs> so I, I don't want to talk in detail here. Okay. Okay. So, um, so the. For, for the first talks, um, the main result is uh, uh, there will be some capture i uh, and, and finally many points x infinity i, i from one to capital i, such that uh, uh, the, the integral of the positive part of Q curvature um, around the ball, uh, uh, over the ball of the center x infinity i uh, is, is bounded from below by eight pi square. Here the radius uh, is uh, is arbitrary. Okay, so uh, and now another uh, the the fact is uh, um, the x infinity i is the maximum point of the function f zero. Okay, and uh, uh, and because of the um, the integral of the positive part of Q curvature is bounded from above by 64 pi square from the second uh, important uh, facts, then uh, we have an upper bound for the, the number of block point. So in this case, it's uh, eight. So, okay, so, so no matter how many uh, uh, maximum point of uh, F zero, uh, the number of blow point in our case is only at most eight. Okay. And uh, okay, so for the second task, uh, we want to understand the WK away from all blow up point X infinity I. So uh, the theorem is, is as follows. Uh, so away from this point, um, WK, the solution of the uh, equation goes to minus infinity uh, locally and then uniformly. And of course, at the H, uh, X infinity I, uh, WK is go to plus infinity. Okay, um, so, uh, so the proof of this theorem uh, follows standard uh, above analysis. Uh, away from this point, you have a uh, upper bound for uh, the, the positive part of the Q curvature, uh, this equation less than eight pi squared here. Of, of course, if we have uh, the reverse uh, inequality, then we have another concentration point. So uh, we must have uh, the less than. So for the less than, then, uh, um, then we have a loss of, uh, we, we make you a loss of uh, elliptic estimate and, uh, 
uh, some functional inequalities and uh, eventually we can prove that the WK must go to minus infinity. So, uh, so this, uh, this condition, uh, this finding is uh, irreasonable because uh, uh, at a capital I point X infinity I, uh, the solution WK is go to infinity. So in order to ma maintain the uh, constant uh, volume, uh, the integral of e for wk uh, equals one. Uh, the other, uh, the other point, the wk must go to minus infinity. Otherwise, uh, we cannot have this uh, uh, constraint. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so now we 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 work on the last part of uh, uh, the problem. So we uh, we want to understand the behavior of the wk near block points. So, um, okay, so, um, so we, we describe uh, the behavior of a WK near the X infinity I uh, as follow. Um, uh, there's two scenarios. First one is a fast blow. And the second is the slow blow up. So, uh, so at each uh, blow point X infinity I, uh, if you pull back, um, uh, pull back uh, the equation, uh, sorry, uh, the, the, the solution uh, WK to the tangent space at uh, x infinity i, and then do some scaling and uh, uh, dilation, then uh, the, the projected solution uh, WK tilde will, will, um, con will converge to some uh, limit profile. So in the fast blob case, uh, we can write down precisely the uh, uh, the form of the blob profile, uh, which is the W infinity hat, which is a log of some uh, some quotient, and for the slow blow up, uh, uh, we we cannot we just uh, we can we just say that uh, we have some blow up uh, profile W infinity hat, which shows some uh, um, force or the equation uh, of uh, exponential uh, nonlinearity here. Okay. <laughs> So uh, uh, the proof of this theorem uh, will uh, it, it also uh, based on a standard analysis, a standard blow up analysis uh, with some some necessary chances due to the fact that we are we are handling a high order case. But the idea is to to turn the um, concentration of curvature into uh, the concentration of the volume. And then if you have a concentration of a volume, then uh, you, you can select a sequence XKI going to X infinity I, uh, such that the volume also constricts at uh, XKI, okay? So uh, once you have a, a sequence of XKI, then you just uh, project uh, WK uh, onto the tangent space at uh, X infinity I. And then uh, appropriate, uh, appropriate scaling and dilation, uh, you can prove that uh, WK tilde uh, belongs to some uh, sort of space. And then uh, you have uh, some equation of uh, force order, and then you use some uh, uh, known classification for uh, force order equation uh, with the exponential nonlinearity, and you can write down. Uh, uh, the Bauer profile. Okay. Okay. So, uh, before uh, complete uh, thing in my talk, I would like to give some uh, remarks. So, um, so the first remark uh, our work is uh, totally inspired by a similar work uh, by Struve recently appeared. Uh, in his work. Uh, he considered the bubbling of the Gaussian, the perturbation of a Gaussian curvature equation uh, of the same form. So instead of uh, Panas operator, we, we have a Laplacian on the left hand side. So the rest is, is the same. Okay. And uh, he, he, he obtained, uh, he obtained the, the bubbling when uh, we take H, uh, lambda goes to zero. Okay. Of course, there are some uh, some difference between some differences between the, the, the two problem. Uh, okay, I, I don't want to 
talk in detail here. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, one, one, one major difference between the finding of these two uh, work is that uh, uh, for the, for the case of the Gaussian curvature equation, uh, Struve uh, can prove that uh, there's no uh, slow blow up. So, so any uh, blob is fast. Okay, but in our case, uh, we, we we cannot. In fact, uh, in in principle, uh, either uh, yes or no can occur. Okay. <clears throat> so. Uh, we, we limit ourselves to the case of a null case. But in the negative case, uh, the problem was studied by uh, Galen Bethany in uh, 2017, but uh, he purely worked on the, the Q curvature equation in that case. So without uh, the extra perturbation here. So uh, we, can, uh, we can repeat uh, our argument for this uh, negative case and therefore can give some slight improvement of the Galen Betty result. Okay. But uh, uh, for the positive case, uh, uh, no result is known so far. Okay, so uh, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, I finished my talk. Okay, thank you, Kwok, for this lovely talk. We thank gives you thanks. Um very nice talk. Um well uh, now uh, we are open to questions. If anybody wants to make some questions, you can unmute yourself or uh, write in the chat. Okay. Can I ask a question? I'm Dabrowski from CISA. Yes, of course. So, my question is I have a few questions, but let's. Uh, first question is, uh, so you said that these solutions uh, go to infinity, but you, maybe I mean it's understood, go to infinity in space or they become singular, that's what, in some finite concentration points. Is this what you have in mind? Okay, so the value of the solution uh, goes to infinity at some point. Okay, that's what I mean. Okay, and my second question is related to, okay. So as you know, uh, do, is this finite operator, has been it discussed only so for scalar functions, for functions I understand, right? Has it been discussed for spinor fields also, like similar, there is a, in the relation mm. to the Dirac operator, fourth power or something like that, or you never? No, uh, I think even for the second order case, uh, Struve also raised uh, raise the same question for uh, for the equation you just talked. So no, I, I say no. Okay. No okay. result at the moment. Understand? Okay, okay, okay. Let me just in the moment stop. Okay, thanks. Okay, sure. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Uh, can I ask a question? Yes, of course. Uh, so is there some statement about uniqueness of the solution? Uh, what, what solution uh, you are talking about? The Q curvature equation? Yeah, yeah, for you. I mean, I mean, you have some condition on uh, existence, right? But uh, what about? Um, oh, OK. Um, well, uh, you, you mean um, this, uh, this result, uniqueness? Yes. Is it, what, yeah. What does this yeah. one? Is, is there only yeah. one or uh, uh, at least one? Yeah. 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 So, uh, so this one is. I mean, at least one, not just one. Yeah. But but in general, I mean, is it known like is there no, finite no, no, solutions no. or infinite number? There's no no unique uh, result at the moment. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's not even known if there is finite number of solutions or, or there, can it be like family of solutions. Uh, oh well, uh, I haven't seen any result. Uh, okay. This is, I, yeah, I, I haven't seen such a kind of results. Perhaps uh, there's a lot of uh, <laughs> solution. Yeah, but that's very uh, good question. Yeah. Well, I also have a kind of a naive uh, question. So this. Uh, so, so you have a, you you say that there is a requirement that f uh, should vanish somewhere, right, on a four manifold necessarily. Uh, this. Sorry, um, I, I, uh, can can you uh, repeat your your question? 
so there was some there was a uh, some as far as the suit uh, uh, there was a necessary condition at some point that f should vanish uh, f should, should vanish somewhere on your four manifold right um which case because of, um well um if if f is smooth and uh yeah in this uh, yeah, case in the no case, case then uh, of course uh, f yeah. will so, so my question is, is i mean suppose there is some nice uh, kind of a nice uh, Situation: This uh, zero locus of f uh, forms some three manifold inside four mm -hmm. manifold. So does it? Does this three manifold has some sort of meaning? Uh, um, I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Okay, you're welcome. Well, I have just a question to do, but just uh, for curiosities, maybe it's a silly question. I don't know okay. if you have sense, but it is possible to, to think this kind of uh, problem to, to solve this equation in, in higher dimensions or, or there is something that, that maybe, um, but I... Well, um, so, uh... So I, I was talking about two problems. Uh, I mean, uh, in fact, one problem or uh, two approaches. Uh, one approach is a uh, direct method and the other is a variation method, uh, so uh -huh. uh, flow method. So um, for, for the, the prescribing Q curvature problem, uh, in fact, we can, uh, we can consider um, similar problem for higher dimension manifold or even higher dimension operator. So, um, okay, so uh, if you continue this uh, disorder, so we also have a, a similar operator of uh, order six, order eight, or mm -hmm. so on and so forth. So what uh, we will call these operator, the, the G, uh, uh, so the, the G, uh, okay, so GSMP uh, operators. Uh, Okay. Yeah. okay. So um, yeah. So for 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 other dimension, you can start uh, talking about uh, uh, the prescribing uh, with the Panet Branson operator. So uh, people also consider this problem uh, as well. So yeah. you can okay. easily find a lot of uh, results in the literature. Okay. Thank you. Um, any other question or comment? I, I still have Dabrowski, I still have some small naive questions. So I understand this Panate operator is an um, uh, elliptic operator, of course, right? Yeah. Pr principal symbol starts mm -hmm. from the fourth power of Laplace okay. of yeah. fourth order, right? Correct. Okay. So my, my question is about the, what is the interpretation of the index of this operator? Uh, well, um, yeah, uh, I have no knowledge about uh, that part, but uh, yeah, so, so, yeah, so. I, and another I, related on special manifolds, like, I don't know, complex manifolds or color manifolds, is something more known about this operator? Uh, Solutions. And as far as I know, uh, people also consider for CR manifolds, but for color manifolds, uh, I haven't seen. Uh, uh, yeah, I haven't seen. Okay. Thanks. For, for, for C, C, CR manifolds, uh, we have, yes, uh, they call Q prime uh, uh, curvature. Okay, thanks. Okay. Well, um I think uh, any other question or, co or comment if if not well uh, if not we are going to thanks again Kwok for this very nice talk and thanks for being here uh, today with us thank you okay, so um, much yeah I, yeah I want to add a, a comment yes okay sure yeah, so uh, as I said uh, earlier, so this is a Lunar New Year's Eve. So Happy New Year all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Happy New Year. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah.
Okay. Well, thank you so yeah. much. Yeah, thank you for having me.